Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Alpine Stars Andes V3 Dry Star Jacket. This very popular textile jacket from Alpine Stars has a fairly rare trick up its sleeve, or more accurately, under its sleeve. Its waterproofing comes from a drop liner, but that trick overcomes the key weakness of a drop liner. Overheating on warm days is an issue when your jacket has a drop liner as the membrane is windproof and it's fixed into the jacket. So air won't go through the membrane and you can't take it out of the way either. This Andes Air V3 gets around that by having direct vents under the arms that allow air to bypass the membrane. The membrane's attached to the jacket on either side of the vent and then there's a sealed waterproof vent zip that you can close. And having worn this jacket in a wide range of temperatures, I'm happy to say that ventilation makes this the most versatile drop liner jacket I've worn. I took this away for a long weekend's ride from Lincolnshire to Anglesey where temperatures were in the late 20s and I was comfortable for pretty much all of that ride. It wasn't as airy as a jacket that's got the membrane taken out but the experience was similar to using a laminated jacket which will usually offer direct venting. Once it got up to nearly 30 degrees Celsius I would have been happier to get something with no liner or better still a mesh jacket but this was absolutely fine. Looking at the bigger picture as well I found this to be a thoroughly decent jacket overall. The outer for this is made from a polyester material that's flexible and comfortable with a ripstop fabric at the shoulders and also the elbows. There are fit adjusters above and below the elbows and also at the waist where there are belts that use Velcro which makes it easy to adjust those belts while you're wearing the jacket. There's also a drawstring cord around the hem to pull the jacket tight and help seal out wind and rain. Now we've spoken about the ventilation but let's show you. The two vents on the front are just in front of the armpits here. They open with a zip and then these straps with press studs on them hold those vents open, which is crucial. Once the vents are open, there's just this mesh material here between your body and the air, which works well as an intake. Now I say that strap's crucial because having your arms outstretched to the bars will naturally pull these vents closed, but the straps are enough to overcome that tendency to close, keeps the vents open, and I can feel the airflow while riding a Suzuki V-Strom 800. When you zip them back up again, they reseal and they're waterproof again. I've worn this jacket in some pretty grotty rain and it's always stayed dry. There are two vents on the rear as well over the shoulder blades to help draw warm air out through the back of the jacket. And as I said earlier, the ventilation setup overall on this jacket just works. The main fastener for this jacket is a zip with a gutted storm flap securing over the top with Velcro. It's quick and it's easy to use. It's the same for the collar. It's just Velcro, again, really easy to use. There's a hook back for that collar, but it's in an unusual position. and I don't find it holds very securely in place. Having that hook nearer the shoulder than the neck makes it a bit easier to connect the loop, but flexing your arms makes it come undone a little bit too easily for my liking. Across the jacket, there are plenty of pockets. You get two roomy ones at the waist, two slimmer ones at the chest, and then the trusty pocket at the lower back. That pocket on the back is big enough to store the removable thermal liner when you're not wearing it. There are more pockets on the inside of the jacket as well. There's a Napoleon pocket behind the main zip, which is labeled as waterproof, and there are two pockets at the base of the liner. Those two lower pockets are also duplicated in the thermal liner. So you'll always have three pockets available, whether you're riding with the liner in or with the liner out. So let's talk about that thermal liner. The torso section of that is 25% thicker than the arms, which gives better insulation for your core while allowing more flexibility for your arms. There's an extension panel as well that folds into place behind the main zip fastener. So if a draft gets past the outer storm flap through the teeth of the zip and then through the flap that sits behind it, you've got that thermal liner as an extra barrier to keep you warm. I rode in cold weather of around 12 degrees with the thermal liner and just a t-shirt underneath that and I was happy. I would want an extra mid layer, I think, as well if I was riding in single digit temperatures. Behind that liner is the main mesh liner and then the armor lives behind that. It's Alpine Star's Flex Plus shoulder and elbow armor, which lives up to the flex part of its name as it's very light and very supple. It meets the basic level one of the CE standard, but it's all listed as type B, which means it covers more of the body than smaller type A inserts. It's very low key and you probably won't even know it's there while you're riding. It's the sort of armor that I would normally expect to find in a lightweight jacket or even a riding shirt. So it really does keep weight and bulk down in this jacket. There's no back protector as standard and Alpine Star's Nucleon insert costs £60 as we record this. Now, if you're watching this because you want to know how to get to the armor in your jacket, you get to it through an internal zip at the lower back. If you open that and reach between the membrane and the outer shell, that's where you'll find the armor pockets. Overall, the protection level for the Andes V3 is CE single A, which is the basic level within the CE standard. Now, the last thing to cover on the inside is the connection method for trousers. There's a full length zip to attach these to Alpine Stars trousers. The matching Andes V3 trousers also have direct venting. This time it's on the thighs 
and they come in three different leg lengths, which is always helpful. For the jacket, men's sizes are small to 6XL, and there's also a women's version called the Stella Andes V3, which comes in sizes from small to 2XL. In terms of sizing for the jacket, the customer reviewers suggest sizing up. Our returns info also suggests that's a good idea, and my experience was the same. I normally wear whatever size converts to a 40 inch chest. Alpine Stars list that as a small, but I actually needed a medium. Okay, it's probably time for me to sum up. I really liked my time with this jacket. At £270, the price is relatively high for one with a drop liner that's not made by Gore-Tex, and the basic CE Level A pass will also put off some people. But this feels like a good quality jacket to me that's effective in a fairly wide range of weather conditions. If you're expecting to ride in heavy rain a lot, then I think it's probably worth trying to find a little bit more money for a jacket with the membrane laminated to the outer shell. And if you think you'll be riding in high temperatures a lot, then one way you can take that membrane out will definitely be a blessing. But if what you want is to cover the bulk of British riding conditions, I'd say everything from single digit temperatures up to mid 20s, then this jacket is a very good choice. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Alpine Stars Andes V3 Dry Star Jacket, but if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.